On the surface, Scryde seems like your standard you punch me, I punch you harder shonen series. But it's actually an allegory about marginalized people living on the fringe of society, hiding their mutant powers, i.e., race, religion, or sexuality, while the MC and the co star fight for acceptance in a world where they are second class citizens. Me, cousin. A brazen, strong willed outlaw and the very definition of chaotic good. And you do you hope? An icy yet duty bound lawman with a troubled past because, of course, he does. And this is the not so hidden BL subtext of Scribe. The story starts with Cosmo scraping by in his poor but upbeat rural community of Lost Ground as an OP badass committing petty crimes and beating up altars, i.e. mutant thugs in the slums. For like 20 whole minutes before hold, an altar-run police force arrive on the scene and Hideo blows into his life. Ryoho single-handedly kicks Kazuma's ass like it's never been kicked before, and Kazuma's never met anyone this much stronger than him, or who looked down on him quite this badly. But this ends up being a day of first for both of them. Neither of them have ever met anyone who pisses them off quite this much. Ryoho is cold and unfazed by everything and everyone except Kazuma. He's certainly not the first alter user to break the law and make the rest of them look bad. Ryuho's own powers manifested from his hate of a bad alter user that unwittingly killed his mom after all. Despite all that, he's such a bastard to Kazuma. Like, way more than necessary. Ryuho even goes to see and interrogate him personally. For someone as unemotional as Ryuho, he really seems to enjoy beating the snot out of Kazuma, who sees this fight as propositioning him for some reason. Kazuma only asks Ryuho to pick up where they left off, i.e. fight, which they do. So why is he so upset right now? He's acting like Ryuho rejected him romantically. Ryuho acts even more out of character when he sentences Kazuma and only Kazuma to life in prison with hard labor, just because he made him mad. And what he has to call Ryuho out on his abnormal and unethical treatment. He can't even tell, or worse, won't acknowledge how crazy he's being, and just bullshits his way right through the conversation. Anyway, by episode 3, Kazuma breaks out of prison with a little help from a friend, and fights his way to freedom. But not before exchanging contact information with Ryuho. After a daring car chase, Cosmo escapes and is in the wind. Ryuho certainly isn't the only one acting out of character. Kazuma used to be a petty criminal who used his powers to put his foot up the ass of other worse outlaws, and Ryuho brings bad alters to justice or whatever like a superpowered Judge Dredd. But both he and Kazuma have stopped pursuing their life goals to wait for another opportunity to hurt one another. I get the prize definitely a factor here, but it goes way past losing a perp or a single fight. Kazuma goes all up out of his way to make trouble and attack holy patrol tanks in the hopes of getting Ryuho's attention. His friend Kimishima even needs to hold him back from taking on all of Holy just to get to him, even though he's barely survived the last two encounters. Ryuho personally leads the anti-altar crusade, but he's feverishly surfing for one in particular. Ryuho 
Kazuma knows he'll see Riho again tomorrow, and he's up shaking like a leaf in his room, and I can't tell if he's scared or excited. The day arrives and they finally meet again to the most dramatic music ever. They both spent years holding back, but decide today to finally go all out on each other. They finally get to tear into one another, and they're pissed when Tachibana interrupts their fun. He says this even though he's been getting his ass handed to him again. After he and Tachibana fall into a ravine, they squash their beef and decide to have a rather amiable chat about Ryuho. And I shit you not, they fought a tentacle monster that leaves Kazuma all sticky afterwards, because subtlety. The whole scene goes on for way too long. Really hope this wasn't some sort of allusion to a gang rape. Don't worry, he'll be fine. Squire takes a trip to fanfiction town in episode 8 after Cosmo goes to hold pretending to enlist. This is secretly to save the captured altos before they're shipped off, but while there, Cosmo's compelled via reality bending altar powers to play nice. Ryuho knew all along Cosmo was probably up to something, but Cosmo only realized something was wrong when Ryuho himself wasn't acting right. Thanks to that, Cosmo is able to break the spell. He manages to escape again, and Ryuho makes a very feeble attempt to capture him. So of course he gets away, but ultimately without being able to free his altar friend. Later, Ryuho still reavows to do everything he can to catch him. あの男は一筋縄ではいかない。法理にとって脅威になる存在だ。責任を持って奴は私が必ず倒します。お、君が嬉しそうな顔をするのを初めて見たよ。そんなことはありません。Naturally, <笑> Ryuho's in denial and Commander Martin isn't the only one whose wife's Ryuho's BL feud antics. Really not even subtle anymore. It's not about the job. I'm not sure it ever was. At the end of the runway chase, Cosmo's just standing there with no more shoulder blade thingies left, but he just escapes somehow. Uh huh. Other than being incredibly possessive and shouting Cosmo's name into the wind all the time, Ryuho gets so moody if he goes more than 24 hours without punching him. Chadis needs to console his cranky ass and even wakes him up in the middle of a fever dream about Cosmo.
俺の敵の夢だカズマ You do how like a man possessed continues to go overboard, break protocol, and shirk his other duties hunting for Cosmo. Cosmo and Riho are a classic case of America's sweetheart unresolved sexual tension. This video is already longer than usual because I couldn't decide what beef on sight clips to show you. They finally have a massive, brief bro down in episode 13. This battle is so over the top that it A. tears a hole in the time space continuum, B. said hole pulls them into a suspiciously rainbow colored vortex that C. wrecked the land around them, and D. left them wandering the world with amnesia for 8 goddamn months. But a single mention of Kazuma is all it takes to trigger Ryuho's lost memories. No words at all. In fact, when Ryuho is being brainwashed and married off via Unke's script writing powers, there's visions of Kazuma that flood in and punch him back to his senses for good. The plot actually separates them for four and a half episodes, but no matter what happens, No matter how far apart they are, with memories erased, they find their way to each other in the dark. You'd think after all that they'd calm their tits a bit, but they immediately go back to wanting to punch each other's faces seconds after the inciting battle ends. This anger they pretend to feel around each other is incredibly forced. They legit don't even know why they're fighting anymore, but they just can't stop. Ryuho and Kazuma are written as opposites for the first half of the show. Ryuho being a posh city boy born into wealth and prestige, it's not so familiar. A Cosmo, a farmer and a thug, like a cross between Farmville and infamous Second Son. It's after the mid season punch up that it becomes more and more obvious how alike they actually are. Ryuho walks a mile in Cosmo's shoes by living among and protecting altar users and villagers. He actually grows to hate Holy after seeing their tactics from the other side. He even leaves them and his old life behind to live in Lost Ground. He and Kazuma seem like yin and yang on the surface, but really, they're both violent alter users driven by tragic pasts to use their powers to make this hostile, discriminatory world a slightly better place. The show finally starts to drop the they hate each other bullshit by episode 20, and they're seeing eye to eye on just about everything. Despite the level of ease and trust they feel around one another, Sundere got a Sundere. So their obvious mutual respect and understanding is shown through synchronized inner dialogue. <laughs> ま、ケルキが死ない。ただそれだけだ。何がおかしい。いやいや。本当に似てるぜ。何これとあんた。ケンは。この野郎と一緒にいるアンシカなんだ。こいつと俺の効力もなんだ。愛想のね、かっこつ
体調との面会は30分後です。彼はもうちょっと。He doesn't even recognize her, or worse, he pretends not to. Remember all the anime out there where the childhood friends are reunited because they still remember or recognize even the smallest details about one another years later? You know, I wasn't thinking about her at all. He can barely even be bothered to look at her directly, and she's left crying into the night wondering what happened to her cinnamon roll. So much screen time is devoted to Ryoho giving her the coldest of shoulders and rejecting or ignoring the feelings she clearly has for him. Even invited her on this date just to tell her he's too busy with the struggle and he's not interested. Ryuha has another admirer, Shiris, who's been working with him for years, and surprise, he doesn't think of her as anything more than a co worker either. This certainly hasn't stopped her from staking claim to him. Kitty gets her claws out in episode 2 when she throws shade at Mimori the day she arrives. Now that's an odd thing to say given the circumstance. Does she think someone is trying to steer you away from her? <laughs> Kazuma is surrounded almost exclusively by men. Ayase, the only age appropriate woman in his orbit, spends the majority of her limited screen time trying to kill him, then chatting him up or hugging him, then back to Murder Town. But she gets cancelled in episode 17. Kazuma's only other female relationship is a non romantic one with Kanami. A grade school girl he rescued and with whom he doesn't spend enough time. It's interesting how many BLS shows have a subplot where the MC is low key raising a child with another man, in Kazuma's case too, where women are conspicuously absent or non motherly. In the entire series, one of the only times Yuho isn't completely indifferent to Achiris is spoilers on the day she died, exchanging her life to undo his death via Stan, I mean her use only once, alter powers. Afterwards, Ryuho is struggling with the whole emotion thing. After some prodding from Kazuma, he actually cries. Over the top sobbing aside, of course he is and should be sad, but this shouldn't have been the first and only time you think to say, oh he really did care. Both he and Kazuma are shown flipping the fuck out over the death of women they've showed zero interest in while alive. With Shedis out of the picture, petrol pining Mori has a shot. She makes her feelings known twice more towards the end of the series. You know who's perfectly capable of being nice and caring to her if he really tries, but hot and cold doesn't begin to describe him. By episode 24, Ryoho turns her down flat. His reasoning being Shiris gave her life for him. As if the idea of him being happy with anyone else at any point in the life that she saved is unreasonable. It's not like he said, let me think about it or I need time. He's just like, and dips. 
Goodbye. I assume to go punch Kazuma in the face. Not that Kazuma's any better, either. Kanami is alive and well, and he is constantly making excuses not to just go see her. Claiming he's staying away from her for her own good and to teach her to stand on her own too, yada yada yada. If she's in danger, then he'll swing by. She's eight years old. When was the last time I heard a guy make so many excuses not to go see a woman? Oh yeah. My point is there's a thin line between duty and avoidance. Plenty of men lead dangerous lives and still find time and women to smash. But Yuho and Kazuma treat the women who love them like an obligation or a tragedy waiting to happen, and not like the romantic option they might otherwise have been. The series ends the way it began, violently. Kazuma and Ryuho become the self-appointed army of two protecting the island of Lost Ground against the overwhelming mainland forces. They spent three whole months putting foot to ass for all of Alter Kind, and during this time we're led to believe neither of them have been home, not that they would go to see Mimori or Kanami even in peacetime. So was there a holiday in Lost Ground? Have they just been together this whole time sleeping in Ryuho's jeep? <laughs> They've clearly gotten very close in these last few months. But when there's nothing left to punch, they don't know what to do with themselves. So they suddenly get uh, curious as to who's stronger. They spend the entirety of the final episode beating the ever-loving fuck out of each other, smiling like they've never had so much fun in their entire lives. <laughs> Is the show me yours and I'll show you mine moment? It's so over the top they make the 6 o'clock news? They even pull a studio trigger and end up in space! It's the best! The show just struggles to give us reasons why they're beating each other to death during peacetime and refuse to be with women who love them. <laughs> Apparently, they just can't move forward and can't get on with their so-called lies if they don't pound each other into the dirt first. Honestly, when guys fight this much, it makes me think it's the only excuse they can find to touch each other. Which is exactly why things get ugly. Like, really ugly. They literally up trying to kill each other right now. So what is it about Ryuho that's stopping Kazuma from living his life? Is it because they've been obsessing over and chasing one another since the day they met? They spend the better part of 26 episodes only being able to leave each other alone by force, and at the detriment of every single relationship they could have had. Ryuho abandoned his mainland home, his wealth, and two different women to come to live the Lost Ground, a place where he knows the guy he's fixated on will be to essentially walk the same path as him. Cosmo already lost his BFF Kimishima, and there's nothing indicating that he visits the remaining altar users, and he just refuses to go home to see Kanami. The original ending implies that she never actually sees him again. So is Ryuho the only real constant in his life of endless fighting? Ryuho is the only person strong enough that Cosmo doesn't have to worry about or protect. He's the one who best understands and empathizes with Cosmo's conviction and ideals. So in the end, the only thing either of them can't be without or leave behind is each other. <laughs>